Hey yo, what's good y'all? It's Stinger, the leader of the You Know Miles fan club. And today I'm going to be showing you five easy methods you can use to make your melodies more dissonant. Now, before I get into the actual methods I'm going to be covering today, I want to answer the questions, what is dissonance and why is it important? And in essence, dissonance is just a clash of disharmony within your melody. And knowing when and how to make use of dissonance is very important. This is because it can heighten or amplify emotions of melancholy or suspense, depending on the context of your melody. And dissonance is something that's not only used in a lot of older music like jazz and soul, but something that's also used in a lot of newer music like plug and b and R&B. So having these methods I'm about to cover at your disposal is incredibly useful. But without any further of this, let's go right into the methods. And the first of which is going to be to switch from a minor to a major chord or from a major to a minor chord. And let me expand upon that. So here we have a chord progression in the scale of A major. And we're playing a progression going from the two to the five to the one, which is a very common jazz chord progression. And for reference for the rest of this video, these pinkish purple notes are the ones that I'm using to make the melody more dissonant. So for this melody, instead of landing on the one, which is A major and keeping it as a major chord for the whole duration, I instead segmented it into two different chunks. And with the second chunk, since our original chord was an A major, we turned it into an A minor chord. And the easiest way you can do that is to just take the second note of your chord and move it down by one semitone. So this is what that sounds like in action. Now, one thing I like to do with this method is take a series of four chords and then with the second and the fourth chord, change them from either a minor to a major or from a major to a minor, depending on what the original chord was. So we're just playing a one to three to four chord progression yet again in A major. And the third chord of A major is typically a C sharp minor, but we're going from minor to major. So we're taking the second note of our chord and putting it up by one semitone. And the fourth chord of our scale is typically a D major, but yet again, we're taking that second note of our chord and putting it down by one semitone to make it minor. So this is just one of many methods I use to implement this strategy. And one recommendation I want to give for this method, as well as pretty much all of the methods in this tutorial, is if you want the dissonance to be less, like, in the face of the viewer and less surprising, start with your original non-dissonant chord and then change it to a dissonant chord with whatever method we're going to be covering today. Yet again, this just makes it so it's less shocking and in the face for the viewer. So that's going to cover the first method you can use to add dissonance to your melodies. And the next method we're going over is going to be diminished chords. Now, if you're unfamiliar with diminished chords, essentially all it is is your root note with two minor thirds stacked on top of it. Or in very simple terms, your root note, skip two notes, note, skip two notes, note. And if you're working with a major chord like I am right here, literally all you have to do is take the top two notes of your major chord and put them down by one semitone. This is a much more direct method of achieving dissonance rather than the minor to major chord change. This is because depending on the root note, we're putting two notes out of scale rather than one. So with that being said, this is what the chords sound like. So with that being said, it's going to completely cover the second method of achieving dissonance. And now we're going to move on to the third method, which is passing tones. Now, I have this melody here that I've made previously to demonstrate passing tones. And when making passing tones, you want to know two things. You want to know what direction you want to move, whether it be up or down. And you want to know what note you want to end up on. So typically what I like to do is take a note from the next chord. So right here we have a C, which is the root of the next chord. And all we're going to do once we know where we want to end up is place two notes, one semitone below each other. So we have our destination, one semitone down, note, one semitone down, note. And in a perfect world, one of those notes will be in scale and the other will be out of scale. But you can always play around with using multiple notes out of scale or multiple notes in scale, different rhythms, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, this is what the passing tones sound like in context with a melody. And if you have a keen ear, you'll notice I used a diminished chord in this melody as well. But that's going to cover the third method of achieving dissonance in your melodies. And now the fourth method more so applies to creating suspense in like darker and more sinister melodies. 
and that is going to be the use of suspended chords. And the two types of suspended chords you're going to want to make use of are suspended seconds and suspended fourths. So here we have a typical F minor chord, and to get the suspended second of that chord, all we're going to do is take the second note of our chord and move it down by one scale degree, which essentially just means move it down to the next note in the scale. And in this case, we're going from G sharp to G. And to get a suspended fourth, you're going to do the complete opposite of that. So instead of putting the second note of the chord down by one scale degree, we're going to bring it up by one scale degree. So this is what those chords sound like in context with each other. As I mentioned, these chords are great for building suspense in any kind of dark and sinister melodies. And now the fifth and final step we're gonna go over for achieving dissonance in your melodies is going to be half step groupings. And essentially all you wanna do to implement this is make use of chords with these half step clusters. Since the notes are so close to each other, it creates a beautiful sense of disharmony and dissonance. So if you want to achieve dissonance within your melody without going out of scale and making it too obvious, this is the way to do it. And now yet again, this is what it sounds like in context with a melody. And now with the fifth method out of the way that is going to completely cover how to make your melodies more dissonant and to display what all of these methods sound like in tandem with each other i crafted a quick little melody and the only method that i'm not making use of in this melody is suspended chords because that's more reserved for like darker melodies but i'm making use of the minor to major chord changes half step groupings passing tones as well as diminished chords so with that being said this is what the quick little melody sounds like So yeah, with that being said, that is going to completely cover the easy methods you can use to achieve dissonance in your melodies. I really, really hope you learned something new with this tutorial. I know it was a bit theory heavy, so if you have any questions at all, throw them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. Also, consider checking out my Patreon where I post the FLPs to all of my beats in all of my videos. That way, if you wanted to study any of the mixing, mastering, arrangement, melodies, drums of any of my beats, they're right at your fingertips. And finally, consider subscribing down below as I post one tutorial every single week and anywhere from one to two sound kits a month. Other than that, it's going to be it. Peace!